Okay, here I'm going to do an example of integrating a rational function of sine. So I'm going to do part A here. We're going to integrate dx over 3 minus 5 times sine x. And what I'm going to do again is I'm going to use, I'm really using the substitution t equals tangent of x over 2. But as we've seen in a previous video, based on that substitution we can come up with a lot of new a new a bunch of new formulas to use so I'm going to immediately make use of these formulas to help us to help us do this problem so okay so we're gonna integrate I'm gonna write it as 1 over 3 minus 5 times sine x and I'm just gonna put the dx out to the um, out to the right so, I mean, it almost feels like you're not even really, it almost feels like you never even see the substitution in this example, and in a sense you don't, because we're going to be using these other, uh, these other important formulas. But again, these formulas come from right triangles and trig identities. So if you want to see where these formulas come from, definitely take a look at that example, or that video that we did. Okay, so what it says is, it says using this substitution, we can simply replace sine x with the quantity 2t over 1 plus t squared. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. We also need to plug in the value for dx, and we saw that for dx we get 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. So 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. Okay, so now the first thing I'm going to do is just a little bit of simplification. So I'm going to stick uh, my first factor, the denominator, I'm going to put that in some brackets and I'm going to put the 1 plus t squared in some parentheses. We would have to distribute the 1 plus t squared to both terms. So let's be careful with our algebra. So the 2 is just hanging out on top, 2 times 1. We would have 3 times the quantity, 1 plus t squared. Then we would have 5 times 2t, but notice when we distribute uh, 5 times, when we, we distribute the 1 plus t squared times the second term, 5 times 2t over 1 plus t squared, the 1 plus t squared and the 1 plus t squared are just going to cancel out. So we would just be left with the negative 5 times 2t dt. And already this is starting to look much more like a familiar uh, you know, a familiar rational function. So we've got 2 over, well let's see, if we distribute, I'm going to write this in descending order, we would have 3t squared, we would have a negative 10t, and then we would have 3 times 1, or positive 3, dt. And now what I'm going to try to do, so now we're just back to doing partial fraction stuff. So now we're just using partial fractions uh, from here on out. So the first thing I would think is, does the denominator factor? Because depending on whether it does or doesn't, we'll do different things. And I think this one does factor. So let's see. To get a, a 3t squared, we could use 3t and t. I know that I have to have a positive when I multiply, but a negative when I add. So the term, or both signs should be negative. And I think if we use a 3 here and a 1 here, everything will work out. We'll get 3t squared minus 9t minus 1t, which will give us negative 10t. And then negative 1 and negative 3 will give us positive 3. So there we are. So now we've got to do our good old par partial fraction decomposition. So we have 2 over 3t minus 1 times t minus 3. Okay, so we've got linear factors of 3t minus 1 and t minus 3. I'm going to put uh, constants a and b on top. Now I'm going to do what I've done in my other partial fractions videos. I'm going to multiply both sides, both, both sides by 3t minus 1 and t minus 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by, so both sides by 3t minus 1 and t minus 3. So on the left side, if we multiply that, we would just be left with the numerator of 2. 
And then when we multiply on the right side, we would have to distribute. The 3t minus 1 would cancel, so we would have a times t minus 3 plus b times, well, the t minus 3s would cancel, and we would have 3t minus 1. Again, all we're trying to do is just determine our a and our b here. So notice if we let t equal 3, well, we've got 2 on the left side. If we substitute in t equals 3, we'll just have a times 0. And then we'll be left with b times, well, let's see, 3 times 3 is going to give us 9, minus 1. Or we'll get b times 8. If we divide both sides by 8, we'll get 1 fourth as the value for b. Likewise, it looks like we could let t equal 1 third. If we do that, we'll have 2 equals, well, let's see, we'll have a times 1 third minus 3. Our second term again, 3 times a third will give us 1, minus 1 will be 0. So again, that's the whole point of plugging in 1 third is we get rid of that second term. We could even, uh, well, we definitely want to keep simplifying. I was going to say uh, you could either multiply both sides by 3 if you want to get rid of the fractions immediately. Let's see. We could 1 third minus 3, we could make that into 9 thirds, so that'll be negative 8 thirds when we do the subtraction. If we multiply both sides by 3, we'll get 6. We have negative 8 times a. So if we divide both sides by negative 8, we'll have negative 3 fourths as our value for a. All right, slowly getting there. So again, we're integrating a over 3t minus 1 plus b over t minus 3. Again, we figured out our value for a that was negative 3 fourths. And we figured out the value for b that was positive 1 fourth. So again, we're just integrating all this with respect to t. What we're going to do now, again, I'm not going to show all the steps. You would basically break this up into two integrals. So we could basically break this up into two integrals. For the first part, we would let u equal 3t minus 1. Uh, you know, for the second one, if you want to think about it, so I'll call that u sub 1. We would just let u sub 2 equal t minus 3. You're just doing a u substitution for both of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fact that if we integrate, well, 1 over x, recall, we get the natural la logarithm of the absolute value of x. So that's the formula I'm using. Well, if you do this and figure out the du and everything, so you'll be left with negative 3 fourths. We would have 1 third times the natural logarithm of 3t minus 1 plus 1 fourth times the natural logarithm of t minus 3. And again, this is, this is a, uh, an indefinite integral, so we do want to put our plus c on there. So let's see, the threes would cancel, so we would have negative one-fourth times the natural logarithm of 3t minus 1, plus one-fourth times the natural logarithm of t minus 3, plus c. Again, you know, if, if this part bothers you, um, I would say definitely take a couple steps to write it out and, you know, fill in, fill in where the one-third's coming from. Just fill in these steps uh, and just, again, use the formulas involving natural logarithm. So last but not least, again, our original problem, right, we started with the variable x. Just like you do any substitution, you will have a different variable. We've got t. We just want to turn it back into x. Well, we're just going to simply replace now that t equals tangent of x over 2, and we will have our solution. So we've got negative 1 fourth times the natural logarithm of 3 times t, which again is tangent of x over 2 minus 1, plus 1 fourth times the natural logarithm of t, again that's tangent of x over 2, minus 3, the absolute value of that stuff, plus c, and now we've got our solution for our first example. All right, so again, as you can see, pretty, you know, pretty long problems. Basic idea, one more time, 
you're just using the appropriate substitutions that we found in our previous video. They're gone now. I don't know what I did with I've got them in my hand. Here we go. We're using the substitutions that we found previously. Use those substitutions. Then it's just going to be cleaning it up with a little bit of algebra. And once you've done that, you know, now you're just back to a partial fractions problem. Again, these are can be long, as we just saw. They're not always the shortest problems in the world. But once you've done this procedure, hopefully you're back to something a bit more familiar. So after that, it was just doing all the partial fraction stuff. Simplify, simplify, simplify. And again, at the very end, just resubstitute in your value for t, and you've got your solution.